up? It's Joey with I'm Elite. We're back in the shop today. We got an 06 Street Bob that we got a whole list of things going on. Tins in the paint shop, cam chest coming out of it today. We're gonna get in there. We're gonna put some new SNS goodies in, some Chris Revis 574 cams. So stick with us. This one's gonna take a little bit, but it's gonna be a fun journey. All right, for starters, we already got the pipe removed uh, just to save some time. If you need to figure out how to take off your stock pipe or like a TBR or something that you're running, you could check out the Big Dick video. I'll put a link right here in the video so you can just watch that one. In the very beginning, we pull a stock one. So, um, so since we already got that removed, the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna pull this peg mount and the brake lever. We'll get that disconnected from the rod and we'll set it off to the side so we can get it out of our way. I always break these loose with a wrench. You could take it all the way off with the wrench if you want, if you don't have power tools, but I always at least break it loose first before using the impact, just to save time. There's just a little retaining pin on here usually. It's got like a keychain. You just have to kind of loop around. Might have to get a dead blow and tap it out. Sometimes just from sitting in there for quite some time. A little tight. All right, now that we got the foot peg and the mount off, we'll go on the other side and pull one of the, the uh, spark plugs out. You'll see why in a minute. I already pulled the wire and got this loose, broken loose with the deep well 5.8. I'm gonna ratchet. Once you break it loose, it should come out by hand. Once you get that out, just set it off to the side and be careful. You don't want to drop dirt or anything down inside of that hole. I'm going to go ahead and pull his air cleaner cover off real quick. The whole air cleaner itself, we're just going to pull it off. Make sure to replace this one after. Sometimes you'll run into this. This one's been stripped out before, so we'll just take a Torx. That's just a little oversized. We're gonna have to put a little bit of heat on this one. And then we'll have to probably go up a size with the Torx now. Sometimes people just throw a little too much Loctite, or as you can see, this thing's pretty rusty, so. You guys live by the water. Sometimes these things just. Shout out to Steve and Mac for saving the day. Ton of rust in there. Those are already loose. 
All right, now we got that out of the way and we got that spark plug pulled. We can go ahead and break the tops of these push rod tubes off. And then we also got this thing up on a jack. You can see we got it free. You'll see why we got that spark plug pulled out of there in just a second. We're gonna take a flathead screwdriver. You can just insert in here and twist these. It is spring loaded, so you gotta be careful not to scratch the collars. All right, now we got these push rod upper removed. We can slide these up. And you can see he's actually already got adjustables in here, which he was not aware of. We had a conversation. He was under the impression everything was still stock in here. So somebody's gone through and already changed at the very least the push rod tubes, or the push rod, sorry. So it looks like he's got quickie push rods in there. Normally this is where we would uh, snip these in half. So we'll still go through the whole process so I can show you what you would normally do. Um, I have a little homemade tool here. It's just a paper clip and a rubber band. I'll hook these up out of the way. Now we're gonna watch these push rods. We have the bike in sixth gear right now, so when we spin it, it's gonna physically spin the motor over and everything's gonna cycle. So we're gonna watch when these front two are on overlap. That means these back two will be on the base circle, so they're on the lowest spot of the cam. That way, if you were gonna snip these, there'd be no load on them. And you'd be able to just come in with a set of bolt cutters and snip them right in half. That way you don't drop any shavings down inside there, you don't want to come in here with like a cutoff wheel or something and snip them in half. So we just use bolt cutters. So I'll go through the cycle and you can see what I mean. All right, I forgot to mention on these dynas, you're gonna have to pull both spark plugs on like an M8 model where you have four of them. So you have two on the back and two up on top. You don't have to pull the two top ones. You would only pull one from each cylinder, but on the dyna, you only have one in each cylinder. So you have to pull them both. Otherwise, as we try to turn it over, it'll make compression in one cylinder and it won't want to turn over. All right, so now that we're free. So right there, they're even. These two are on overlap. So the back two are on the base circle, they're on the low point of the cam. So they're not opening the valve at all or closing it, Everything. there's no stress on these at all. So this is a point where, while these two are on the overlap, you would take bolt cutters on a set of stock ones and snake under here just to make sure not to uh, damage the tappet block or the tube and you could snip that. The reason you snip it is if you don't wanna have to take the top end off, the rocker box and the rocker assembly, you're not gonna get a solid one piece push rod to lift up high enough and come out of there. These adjustables, you can actually physically undo the jam nut and collapse it and it will shrink down by about three inches so you can actually snake it out of there. So since he already has adjustables and we're at the point where we would snip them, we're gonna go ahead and collapse these two and pull them out and then we'll do the same. I can get these two front ones on the base circle so that there's no load on them and then we'll bring them down and pull them out as well. And these quickies, you would need a quarter inch wrench to hold your actual push rod itself in place. And then you need two 7 16 wrenches for your jam nut and for the uh, upper body of the push rod. We'll take our two 7 16 Break the jam nut loose. Once you get it all the way down, you can take this and hold the bottom half of the push rod. Hold the top and spin the bottom. 
once you get it loose enough to where there's zero lash sorry zero tension on it you'll be able to spin it freely See now you can see, compared to a stock tube, how much shorter you can get that so you can actually get it out without having to remove everything. Since this bike's a little tired and has some miles, and this is the only upgrade that seems to have been done to the motor so far, we're gonna go ahead and pull these out because we have some new tappets and everything. And we'll give them some fresh O-rings and. We'll go ahead and throw new push rods. That way everything starts fresh at zero miles. You can see there's a little bit of load on them so they won't go in just yet. Now normally you could stick your fingers up in here and you can spin this over just like how we watched these two and you can feel for the two when they're even when this side's on overlap but it's a lot easier I feel like to have something visual so our machinist Jimmy made me a set of these old snipped off stock lowers and they've both been machined down to equal length so that way I can physically watch the cycle still We have exhaust, intake. That's gonna be it right there. So now we can go ahead and do the same thing on this front cylinder. Don't forget when you're taking them out, you're going in. You're threading into it, so it's not gonna be like a righty tighty, lefty loosey. You wanna tighten it, you wanna go in. All right, now we gotta come in and take these tappet blocks off. So we don't have to worry about shit falling all, all over the shop floor. We'll pull all these old O-rings out of here. We're gonna go ahead and replace all of these O-rings. A whole new kit. That way everything's starting fresh. Everything can break in together. We're going to go ahead and swap out all these gaskets. Since we're taking everything off, you're going to want to change them all. You got these retaining pins in here. They help to anti-rotation pin. Remove those. 
those. You can see on his old tappets that we pulled out of here, there's a lot of scoring on here. So he was definitely getting debris in there and probably a little under oiled. It's kind of a little hard to see. Light catches it. You can see here's a brand new one. Now we can go ahead and get this cam cover pulled off. If you're gonna use power tools for stuff like this, I recommend you use like a drill or a screw gun, something that has a clutch that you can activate so that way you can, can't physically hammer on it, you know, like an impact. That way it has to overpower the clutch and it'll just stop trying rather than strip the bolt out. Now we got to here. Next thing we're gonna do, we're gonna break these two bolts loose on the tensioner. And then after we break the, the two loose, we'll pull the bottom one out. You can pull this shoe out because it's gonna fall out anyways. Take a half inch on an impact, you can break this pinion sprocket bolt loose. 9 16 so get the crank sprocket bolt. I'm just gonna shimmy these two. And we're gonna reuse those, so just set them off to the side so we can reuse them later. And we'll go through and we'll pull all the cam plate bolts and we can actually leave the four that are attached to the pump because those don't hold it in here and we'll pull the whole thing out as an assembly. Just gonna give it a little wiggle. The oil pump seated in an o-ring in the case so it's not gonna want to just slide right out. All right before we get this out I'm gonna grab a rag. All right, now we got rag set up. And there's your whole cam chest assembly, basically. That's a stock, stock plate, stock pump, stock Harley Davidson cams, stock tensioners, everything in here is still stock. So looks like the only upgrade he had was just the uh, adjustable push rods. You got a couple of O-rings you got to go through here and remove as well. They give you replacements from S&S. &S. that those two cam bearings removed out of those journals and then we'll put new ones in we'll disassemble this old assembly so we can get the the cam chain out of there we're gonna need that we'll need a snap ring we'll need a couple small things this thrust washer so there's a couple things we'll take from here but most of it's gonna just go right in the trash while we're already here I'm gonna go ahead and pull off this old seal old gasket let me go ahead and get the cam bearing removal tool set up up here and I'll show you how we pull those out. Remover set up. I'll throw this guy in here. You feel it physically like catch the detent on there. Okay, over. This pin's gonna help the end of it flare out so it'll expand.
We've got the cam, the old stock cam bearings removed. We're gonna start putting in our first cam bearing. Give me just a second. When I get ready to do this second cam bearing, I'll show you guys how we go about doing that, swapping the tool over everything. You'll be able to sight up underneath the tool and watch the bearing physically install into the case. Take all our thumb screws out. You'll have to kind of almost fully disassemble the tool to swap sides. So once you get everything swapped over, make sure you go ahead and get some assembly lube. Throw the assembly lube on that bearing after you pop it on the, the install tool. And then make sure you lube up the cam journal inside the case. You should get your tool lined up again. Throw all your thumb screws in. Now again, just like on the first one, just gonna side up from the bottom and run it in with the, either a ratchet or ratchet wrench. You don't wanna drive it under power. Once you feel it seat, you're just gonna stop. And once we pull that off, you'll be able to see both bearings are sitting right at the base of the chamfer that's inside of those cam journals. Now we're gonna get our cams pulled off of our stock plate only so we can take the cam chain. We'll need a couple other things with the snap rings and thrust washers to transfer over also. <laughs> now we got our chain, we can set that aside. Go ahead and get all of our stock cam chest assembly out of the way. Clean the whole mating it face of the uh, the cam cam cover. Throw our uh, tool to check the run out on the crankshaft. You don't want to have more than I believe it's nine thousandths on the twin cam. We're gonna go ahead. We have this in six gear with the spark plugs pulled out, so we'll be able to just spin it over, and you'll physically watch the crankshaft spin. See, there's only about three thousandths run out in that. So we're well within the tolerance. We're gonna get this oil pump split apart, break apart all the G rotors. All these SNS gear rotors are all matched set. So don't mix inners and outers. You see, I would just lay them down here and keep them all together. We're gonna go ahead and fill in all the journals with assembly lube. Make sure everything's got a nice coat of assembly lube. When you reassemble this one right here, your inner set of gears right here, there's gonna be a relief cut on the inner sprocket. Make sure that release, that relief cut is facing towards the motor or you won't be able to push the pump in all the way. So now we got it all snapped up. We're gonna get all of our flats in line. Got all the flats lined up, so we'll set that aside. We'll get our cam plate. Go ahead and take the brand new O-rings that come in the kit. You don't want to pop them on the pump. You want to go ahead, after you've removed the stock ones, press those into 
the actual orifice on the cake. Make sure they're seated. We're gonna take our new 574 cams and take our stock chain. We're gonna get these timing marks lined up. So once you get the two cams in the chain, you're gonna to wanna to start walking one through the links until you get the timing marks perfectly in line. Even if you're off by one tooth, it's gonna be an issue, so make sure. So we walked it around, now we got our timing marks lined up. Go ahead and lube up those cams, lube up the journals. We'll drop those cams inside the cam plate. We're gonna go ahead and put our thrust washers, snap ring back on. Make sure the snap ring's fully seated in the groove. Now we can take our rear cam chain tensioner. The easiest way is to get one bolt started. Doesn't matter, left or right. And then after you get the one, you'll be able to swivel it into place. I'll throw a little lock set on the hardware first. Just gotta get one bolt in here. And then now I can get the second in. Now they're both started, we'll go ahead and run those down. That's it. Usually I like to go about a hundred inch pounds. cams in there and go ahead and get four new oil pump bolts oh there's one of the ones I couldn't find After we got everything in, you saw I hand started all the cam plate bolts and I went through and just snugged these, not even close to their final torque. So we just got them nice and snug. Now we're gonna go through and torque, or sorry, snug all these cam plate bolts in order. You'll see this cam, this SNS cam plate, everything's ordered. One, two, three. 
we're gonna take it just kind of right to snug, right where it feels like it wants to stop without really cranking on it. Now we're gonna go ahead and torque all these cam plate bolts. Just like the, uh, the tensioner, it's gonna be 90 to 120 inch pounds. I like to keep it kind of in the middle, so we'll go about 100. Go through them all real quick. Make sure nothing shifted. All right, now we're gonna turn the motor over twice and then we'll torque down these four oil pump bolts the same, about a hundred inch pound. We'll go two, four rotations. Just watch the flat on the pinion here. Did you lock that one? Is that where that yeah, stopped I, it? No. All right, so we ran into a little snag after we got everything buttoned up, couldn't get the motor to turn over. But the problem was something that you should check for. When we took that pump apart to grease everything, I took everything out exactly how it was and laid it out, greased and put it all back in. One of those uh, G gears that's at the very back was flipped over the wrong way. It's got a little step to clear the step on the main shaft. So the main shaft was hanging up because that gear was flipped over the wrong way. So it wasn't clearing. So as soon as I put load on the, on the cam plate, it was actually binding on the main shaft. So we weren't able to turn the motor over. So I took it all out and just checked all the gears and I figured out one of them was flipped the wrong way. So I just flipped it and corrected it. So now we have all of our cam plate bolts torqued down to 100 inch pounds. Our four oil pump bolts are all tor torqued to 100 inch pounds. Everything turns over free. So now we're gonna get this flat in line with this little indexing mark here. We're gonna take the stock thrust washer and put it back on. And you'll see there's like a big tooth on these splines. Lines up here, you can only get this thing on one way. We don't have to worry about the chain right now because we're going to be doing a little measuring. Get that pinion sprocket on. We're going to go ahead and just get these sucked down tight real quick. And then you gotta take a straight edge. You can't have more than 10 thousandths offset between these two. So we're gonna take a 10 thou feeler gauge. And a straight edge. One of these is gonna be higher than the other, usually the pinion sprocket. You got it flat there. See, I can slide right up underneath it. So we have more than 10 thousandths there. You're gonna make sure you're down flat. Make sure you don't teeter. Then you're not flat. But you'll get a false reading, so you make sure you're pushed down flat. Get 
and we need to change that thrust washer. We've already measured it, gone through, and this is this factory one's 110 thousandths. We've already done the math on what we needed to add to it, so we figured out we needed like 129, 130. So we'll get some assembly lube on that. You will cross thread this one if you're not careful, so. We still have a little, it's free. There's a little bit of teeter. So you know that there's still some offset. We can come back with our 10 thou. And see now we can't get under it. So now we're good to go. And pull that off, put the chain back on. Get locked tight on everything. Don't forget to keep your timing marks on the chain, on the, the two sprockets in line. And as long as you got that flat in line with that index and your cams are timed with each other, you can tell by your two little indexing marks here, little timing marks. Now we'll go ahead and get these bolts tightened down. We're gonna torque those down. Got a little sprocket locking tool again. So now we're gonna throw a little red Loctite on this cam sprocket bolt. Remember not to cross thread this one. You should be able to get it started by hand. It should go in pretty smooth. Also throw a little red Loctite on the pinion sprocket bolt. Only for time saving and just run them in a little bit. All right, so this cam sprocket, we're gonna go 34 foot-pounds. All right, now the pinion sprocket, we're gonna go ahead 24 foot pounds. All right, so now that we torque the cam sprocket to 34 foot pounds and the pinion sprocket to 24 foot pounds, we're gonna get this cam chain tensioner on here. We're gonna torque down those bolts to 100 inch pounds each. 
Make sure to throw a little blue Loctite on there. Helps to get the top one in first, just kind of like how you took the old one out. You can swing it up into place. Now that we torque these tensioner bolts down to 100 inch pounds, we can start putting our tappets in and our anti-rotational pins, and then we'll start getting our push rods in and adjusting everything. Four brand new SNS precision tappets we're gonna put in here. the roller on it rolls in one direction. So you only want it going with the cam lobe so it can go this way or this way. Doesn't matter. But either way, the roller needs to be oriented in the correct direction, which the anti-rotational anti pins are gonna fix that. And just drop that. Now it won't be able to spin. It'll always be rolling in the same direction. Cam lobes up right now. All right. Now we can throw, we'll get these surfaces cleaned up. We'll throw some brand new gaskets down and get our uh, tablet blocks in place. We're gonna get some of this wax and grease remover on a microfiber. None of the old gaskets stuck on there, so we don't have to worry about scraping anything. Go ahead and clean these up real quick while we have them off. We'll clean all the oil off of these old tappet block bolts, oil, Loctite, rust. There's a little bit of everything on this bike. Actually the wrong one. <laughs> Trying to put the number one on the number two. Clean up our other tap it well.
We got fresh tappet block gaskets. All our tappet block bolts have fresh Loctite. We can wait till the end to close the cam cover up just in case anything stupid happens. We drop anything. We have access to everything. Just get all of these down snug at first. Just kind of barely bottoming out. I like to run them all down first so there's no weird load. I'm going to go through and torque those all to 100 inch pounds also. Just always kind of do like a crisscross pattern. Let's start on this one, and the back one directly across. And then we just usually like to go through and check them, make sure nothing shifted at all. Those are all good. Now we can get our new O-rings in here. This push rod kit comes with quite a few replacement O-rings. So there's a few different sizes here. These big ones here, the thickest ones. If you've noticed, the thick ones fit right on the top of the tube. So that's the one for up in the top of the head. You don't want to put these on the push rod, on the push rod tube. Put these up in the head themselves. It helps to actually coat them in a little bit of assembly lube. Just so they, if they want to fall, it'll help them kind of stick up in there. And so when you go to push it in, it doesn't kind of like curl back anywhere. Once you look up in there, you can see if it's kind of not seated right. We curled on one side. See, like right here, you can see this back side right here is not all the way in. There it is. So there's the four new upper ones. And you'll see you got slightly larger one, but there's a, between the two sides, they're about the same thickness, but a little different diameter. That one's for the bottom of the tube. These ones don't so much need the lube, but Just something I prefer to do so we know it's not going to catch in there.
Now that we got all those in, we can start getting our, our cams situated where we have one cylinder on overlap and one on the base circle so we can get our tubes and push rods set up on one side and then we'll be able to do the opposite. The last O-ring to change. Since he already has the shorty push rod tubes and they're satin black to match everything. Well, the ends of these tubes can be sharp, so try not to cut your O-rings on there. So you got that O-ring right there. Seats inside of this little flare. You have the washer that physically pushes it into the seat. And the spring is what's actually pushing it down once you lock it in with the upper. Now all his O-rings will have zero miles, zero wear of any kind. Everything's gonna start off fresh together. We wanna leave the push rods collapsed all the way. Put them inside the tube. It's gonna be easiest to start with the back, the intake. So remember you got those O-rings in there, you don't wanna push them out. That guy dropped down in there. And then we can, now that we've dropped down inside the tappet block, we can start to spin this out and get it to expand. Just a little bit so it's locked out. We don't want to get to the no lash yet. All right, so we still got plenty of play in them. They're just in place for right now. I'm gonna take my two little tool that I have. We're gonna watch these till we get this back cylinder on overlap so we know the front is on the base circle. We've got exhaust, intake, there we go. And they're about equal height there. So now we can take our little paper clip tool. We're gonna get a flathead screwdriver. I'm gonna get this upper locked in place. You'll feel it physically snap into the O-ring up top.
that's pushed in all the way up top, we can get our little paper clip tool. All right, now from here we can start getting these adjusted. So we'll start with this back one. You just want to back this this push rod out until you have zero lash, so no more up and down play. Don't forget, you got to get this jam nut out of the bottom. You're gonna need that little floating guy. I've got a little bit of clay in there. Alright, so now that back one has no lash, we got no more up and down movement. So from there, now we're going to want to mark one of these flats on here. Something like a silver sharpie. We'll just mark one flat. So now we're gonna, now that we're from zero lash, we're gonna go four full turns out. So it would be 24 flats if you're counting the flats, or you can just watch your one indexed flat come around four times. Hold that. Now that we got a little bit of load on there, as long as we can still spin those, we're good. We're gonna have to tighten this other one up, make sure we can still spin them. So we know that there's no load on them, and then we'll be able to start the uh, the rear cylinder. Don't forget about that jam nut. So now we're at zero lash. Same thing, we're gonna go we're gonna mark one. Do it. Four full turns.
Sofa. 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 We got no lash. We can still spin those. Now we're gonna roll this over and we're gonna get these front two on overlap so that we know the rear cylinders on the base circle. So now our back two, you can see our, um, or sorry, the front two are on overlap. So now our rear cylinder is on base circle. Go ahead and get our tool out of here. Push those down. Bring the collars down. Now we can take our upper. This is the tricky part. Just like taking them out, you don't want to scratch the collars all up. Now that's the front cylinder is all done. Get all our lube and whatnot. Now we can move to the rear cylinder. Don't forget to jam that again. I'm gonna try to hold both the jam nut and the, the actual body itself while you extend that push rod. Here we're at. <laughs> it's hilarious, dude. Right. So we're at zero lash here. Just to make it on our easy on ourselves to do this one with by itself without the other push rod in there. Don't forget to mark one. Four turns from zero lash. Nice!
So we're at zero lash there. Same thing, four turns. Spin everything over, make sure everything cycles. Everything's all good. You get a new gasket on here, close this up, get the air cleaner back on, throw the spark plugs back in. And once everything comes out of the paint shop, we can give this thing a fucking fire up and test drive. We can get all his cam cover bolts, clean all the oil off of those so we can reinstall all of them. We're going to torque these all to 100 inch pounds. We're going to go in sequence. I'll show you guys the sequence. Let's get some blue Loctite on all these. Clean up our cam cover a little bit. solvent in there because it'll break down the oil. I'm gonna hit it with the air blower real quick. All blown out and wiped out. I can grab our new gasket.
I'm gonna go ahead and get all these started and then we'll torque them all in sequence. Most of those all hand snug, I'll go through with the torque wrench. 100 inch pounds. And I'll go through and just make sure, I'll check all of them, make sure everything's cool. Nothing moved. Just do a full circle all the way around it. Now we can go around the other side, get the spark plugs put back in. Throw a little bit of anti seize on there. And usually I'll just run these in. They should go basically all the way bottomed out by hand. Let's throw all the way bottomed out by hand. Go ahead and take a 5 8 socket. And you can just, usually how I do this, I'll get this down to snug. So it's about snug there. Once it's like tight on its own, where you don't have to force it anymore, I only go about maybe 16 to an eighth of a turn. And that's as far as I take it. So again, you can see, so like right here we're loose. See it takes no effort. And now that's snug. From there is where I would go about an eighteenth, eighteenth of, you know, sixteenth to an eighth of a turn. So usually I'll say like six o'clock on the clock, just moving it essentially one number, like seven o'clock. Install the spark plug wires. Going to get an air cleaner reinstalled. Throw any Loctite on these bolts only because they're stainless bolts and they're going into aluminum heads. There's always a good chance you're going to get that stuck up in there. But what I do like to do is since there's O rings on here. While I have it off, just go through and clean up all the mating surfaces. His air cleaner gasket here is still pretty good. Actually, I want to take these over to the uh, wire wheel maybe clean these bolts up. We've done all this work. I want to stick those back on there looking old. Now before I completely tighten those down, I want to get these three on real quick.
These ones I'm going to use a little blue Loctite. Those. Same thing, don't want to over torque them, but I don't want them loose like when we were taking this off. They were virtually finger tight. Go ahead and clean all that oil blow by he had in there. She was definitely due for a little love. Now we had one of these bolts that was stripped out in the beginning. We'll make sure to replace that. A little blue Loctite, let me go grab a new bolt. Solar brake linkage, rear brake. Sometimes some dirt and powder coat. Put a little red Loctite on this foot peg bolt so we can get this all reinstalled. That's it. As soon as we get all the tins back from the paint shop, she'll be ready to rip.